Hello friends, this is Paul, and I hope you're enjoying wandering through nature with me each week. Well, if you enjoy wandering through nature and you enjoy journaling those wanderings, in other words, writing down or drawing whatever you find out there on our adventures, well, I've got an awesome nature journal for you. Yeah, I have three different nature journals with three different covers on them. The insides are pretty much the same. Lots of blank pages for you to write and draw all your experiences and your feelings while you're wandering through nature. The covers are different on each one of the three. And I also, for the young at heart or the youngsters who wander through nature with you, I have a children's nature journal, which is a guided nature journal. Lots of pages filled with ideas and suggestions for adventures in nature. Maybe they want to go exploring nature at night, doing a bug night. Well, they can do that with my suggestions and they can write everything down in their journal. And of course, I did leave some pages blanks for the youngsters to actually fill them out. Where can you get these awesome journals? Well, they're available now on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon.com. Do a search for author Paul Ferringer and you'll find the Nature Wanderer journals. And I'm in the middle of creating some new ones. So keep an eye out and grab those journals while they're available. Have a great day and keep wandering through nature. Hello friends, I'm Paul and that means this is the Nature Wanderer podcast and today you find me crunching through the snow here um, I'm at Letchworth State Park today. It's a New York State Park in the Genesee region, Genesee County, Wyoming County. Um, the park actually is between those counties, and I'm um, back in the woods on a snow-covered trail. Hopefully my footsteps don't get too loud for you, but we're out here exploring the woods, and this is our, this is my New Year's episode. And don't worry, I'm not going to get into, oh, make this resolution, make that resolution. I have learned when I was younger, I would make resolutions, New Year's resolutions, every single year. And of course, none of them ever stuck. <laughs> when you're young and you're just like, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that. So let's make a resolution. We're going to start doing this. We're going to start being better. We're going to start getting out of the woods more. We're going to start doing this. And, and it ends up where you keep maybe one or two of them halfway through the year and then they dissolve away too. So I did make a resolution many years ago, had to have been like 20, 30 years ago, that did stick. It was my only resolution that year. And that New Year's resolution was to basically never make another New Year's resolution again. And that one stuck. So yeah, I have decided never to make a New Year's resolution again because why bother? Oh, I've got some fox prints. Yeah, I've got a fox that I'm following here. They look fairly fresh too. It's probably earlier this morning and they went along this trail as well. So don't worry, I'm not going to tell you make this resolution and that resolution. I encourage you to get out in 2024, get outdoors and start exploring nature more, but I'm sure you already do a lot of that. So maybe we should kind of be encouraged to invite others to get out in the woods and explore nature a little more. Yeah, there's um, something that goes on around here. I don't know if it's in your neck of the woods too. But the New York State Parks and some of the county parks too, like Erie County Parks, they do a first day hike. So I know at Letchworth State Park here they will do a couple of them. 
Uh, I know they're doing them at Allegheny State Park. I believe they're doing one at um, Knox Farm State Park in East Aurora. So they will be doing these first day hikes. And it's just, what do you do on New Year's Day? You know, if you're out partying all night, you may be sleeping in a little bit. But um, if if you you know feel great in the morning, what are you going to do all day? Nothing's open. Nothing's going on. So why not get out and enjoy nature? So whether you're exploring your backyard or going out and and exploring local parks, you know, it's a great thing. So the look up on the internet, New York State Parks or wherever you live, you know, put in first day hike. So it's like getting out there and renewing the the year or starting the year with a hike out in nature, walk in nature. And usually they will have a hike that is good for your level, your hiking level skill, I could say. Good naturalists. I consider myself a good naturalist. Good naturalists look at their group and they can kind of feel it out and decide, hey, this group's not up for that big climb. I think I'll take this other route today. So... Hopefully you get a good naturalist on your hike and they can tell whether your entire group is up for a good hike or maybe a more relaxed hike, which can also be a good hike. I hate to put that label on it. A good hike has to be one where you really get rough and tough out there and you're trotting along. And, you know, a good hike is somewhere... And this is my opinion, my opinion, okay. Good hike is one where, in my opinion, you get to see a lot. You get to explore a lot. Whether you're covering a lot of ground or not, you could go 100 feet and back again. And you explore and discover so much. To me, that's a good hike. So get out and, you know, try one of these first day hikes out. If, if they're not holding one near you... Do your own first day hike. Yeah, it, it might be a lot of fun. But anyhow, I'm going to shift gears here because I was going to talk a little bit about getting out and exploring nature and discovering nature and exploring, you know, in the new year, different ways to explore. Uh, but then I got a text the other day from my brother. He is in Iceland. Him and his wife have a house in Iceland, and he also has a house in Seattle, Washington. And they kind of go between the two, and they travel around. Or He's retired. Unfortunately, she is not, and she works in Iceland in education. So she's there in the winter time. So he's there in the winter time, yeah, so they spend a lot of their winters in the cold of Iceland, but I got a text from him the other day about, maybe you don't know this going on, I know I didn't until I got this text, about the volcano that's erupting. And basically his first text was, hey, look what's happening 30 miles away from me. <laughs> he sends a, a link to a video on YouTube about the volcano in Iceland. So I thought, hey, that's really cool. Um, I thought I'd share a little bit of that information with you about this volcano that is erupting in Iceland. If you listen to my Iceland episodes, it was a two-parter, maybe you remember that Iceland is built on uh, basically two different continents tectonic plates. Tectonic plates from earth science. You probably went in earth science. The earth is made up of all these big rock plates. So the earth's crust, the earth's surface, are plates. They're moving and they butt up against each other. So when I went to Iceland in the spring, I actually had one foot in North America and the other foot in Europe. Yeah, I was on a tectonic divide. 
So it's kind of neat to say, hey, I stood in two continents at the same time. <laughs> and so Iceland has this tectonic plate, North American plate, and the European plate dividing the country. And this connection where the two plates meet goes right through the country, and therefore, as it's moving, the two plates rub against each other, causing earthquakes and gaps. Gaps in the Earth's crust, allowing lava to flow through. So they have quite a few active volcanoes in the country. And now and then, I mean, they're dormant most of the time, but now and then one gets more active than it has been and starts spewing out lava. And one of my wanderings out west I actually stopped at Mount St. Helen and saw that volcano. Uh, I have seen another volcano, I can't remember the name of that one, but uh, I have seen a couple of volcanoes before. And when I was a kid, I went with the family to Hawaii and saw volcanoes there as well. So I'm a little familiar with volcanoes, but the type of volcanoes I'm used to are the cone volcanoes. The ones that stick up out of the ground because the lava is essentially going up through a single chute through the crust of the earth. And as it goes up through that single chute, it kind of gets bogged up and pressure builds up behind it. And that pressure is just pushing and pushing and pushing until finally it finds that crack through the crust and it just spews out all this lava. And that's when you get these eruptions out of this cone. I, as I'm walking through the woods, um, I see a couple of tree stumps and it reminds me of my grandson when he was much younger. He used to... Oh, I've got coyote tracks along here now. Um, he used to call the tree stumps volcanoes. <laughs> it's like, what is he talking about? But if you look at a tree stump, I mean, it kind of comes up out of the earth and has a top on it. So it looks kind of like a volcano, a mini volcano. So I always think about that when I see tree stumps. It's like, there's a volcano. Kids, such imaginations. They're great. So anyhow, the these are the type that we're used to. And all the lava basically shoots up, and depending on how much pressure is behind it, it will tell you how far up the lava is shooting, and then it usually breaks open the side, and it flows out that side. Fairly predictable the direction as to the lava flow, but the one in Iceland is a little bit different. It's not a cone. Instead, the, cr the, the crust of the earth cracked open. So it's a long fissure. F-I-S-S-U-R-E, fissure. So not like the animal fissure. I want to make sure you understood that. So it's like a crack in the earth. And it goes for quite a number of meters. I can't remember how many they said it is because they change it every day. But this crack in the crust in Iceland makes this volcano a little more dangerous because the lava is flowing differently. It's not just shooting out and then flowing in one direction. It's kind of pouring out of this fissure. So if you see the live videos, yes, there are live videos on the internet. I was watching them today and it was, it was snowing hard there and there was a fog in the air. So it was kind of like a whiteout on the video, but I did see some of the recordings from earlier today, last night, and they were more clear, and you could see this long line of fires. That's all the lava coming up through this fissure, this crack in the earth. So really amazing. But it makes it more dangerous because it's less predictable where the lava's going. Now, this, like I said, this is on the peninsula in the south 
western part of Iceland. And if you're familiar with the geography of Iceland, that's pretty close to the airport. A major power plant, they actually use this volcano, as destructive as it is, all this molten lava just below the surface, they use it to their advantage in Iceland. They take advantage of it by harnessing it. And they will harness the heat from the ground and heat up the water. So the hot water in the houses comes from geothermal, but they also have these power plants that harness this hot water to turn turbines to create electricity. So the electricity is not made with coal, it's not made with gasoline, um, they don't need you know, fuel oil to heat their houses, or, I mean it's all geothermal from the earth. So they harness it from this, you know, heated lava underneath the crust of the earth. So they take advantage of it, even if it can be very destructive at times. But in this area, just below where the lava is flowing, is a small town. And they've already had, because of the earthquakes, remember the tectonic plates are rubbing against each other, causing earthquakes. Ah, the crows are calling. Um, they're causing some earthquakes, and they've had some damage to the roads, to some of the houses there. Uh, part of the town, I think, has been evacuated. I haven't seen much information on that. But they're worried that this lava could flow right into the town and do a lot of destruction, a lot of damage. So there's that, plus the airport is not too far from this lava flow as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that this lava could damage if it heads in the wrong direction. Now, Reykjavik is also along this peninsula. It's at the northern part of the peninsula, but Reykjavik, the capital, and I think it's the largest city in Iceland, Reykjavik is safe. They're far enough away. The lava will not reach them. Uh, my brother is in a little town that they call the Summer House, and that is, like I said, 30 miles away, so they're safe where they are. They feel what my brother calls um, swarms of earthquakes. And I asked him, I never heard that term before. I said, what is a swarm, an earthquake swarm? And he says, well, it's kind of like a constant rumble that just kind of fades and then it builds and then fades. And so it, it, it's constantly going. You have multiple mini earthquakes, one on top of another. And he says that you don't really notice it a lot. But he went to visit a friend of his who's just south of Reykjavik. And at their house, they were feeling more of the shock from this earthquake. They, the building, the whole building was actually swaying at this location. So, um, so Kredigeden, that's the little town where my brother lives, Kredigeden. Not spelled anything like it. <laughs> yeah. The spelling and the and the pronunciation are totally different. Um, Havarda Garden is how I used to pronounce it until my brother corrected me. And it's like, hey, I'm just pronouncing it the way it's spelled. And he said, nope, Kredigeden. So Kredigeden is far enough away, they're safe. So that's what's going on in Iceland. You have these earthquakes because of the tectonic plates. And it's been a very active time. Uh, when I was there in the spring, shortly after I left, like a, I think it was within a week after I left, uh, they had a small volcano eruption at that time. And that settled down and, and stopped, and now they have this one starting up. So they have had, as far as I know, I recall, three volcanic eruptions just in the past two years. 
So it's starting to become quite active. The area, they've all been the same general area. And according to the scientists, I was watching some videos, and according to the scientists, they go dormant for, I mean, the area. The volcanic area will go dormant for, you know, quite a while, decades. And then all of a sudden, they'll have the activity again. And this activity could last for quite a while, quite a number of years. So I guess you have to take the good with the bad. You get the environmental effects of, you know, nice, clean, fairly free energy. Uh, but you have to worry about your house possibly being wiped out by a volcanic eruption. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's a scary thing, but it's also pretty interesting to watch. So I want to just, you know, talk a little bit about the volcanoes and how they work and what's been going on in Iceland there, because it's pretty interesting. And I would like to bring you up to date on nature and what's going out on out in nature. So I, like I said, I kind of changed my, my topic for this episode kind of last minute. And so, um, anyhow, well, I hope you enjoyed learning about volcanoes with me. Uh, and if you get a chance, go on the website, the YouTube. There's, like I said, a live video of it. And uh, if you just Google the Iceland volcano, you're going to find a lot of videos explaining the whole thing. Um, live live videos on it. So it's really kind of interesting to watch. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll leave the links in the show notes. Um, I hope you have a great New Year's and hopefully 2024 will bring you everything you want and, and more and keep that positive attitude in 2024. Um, I feel it's going to be a, a great year and Hopefully you feel the same way. Get out and explore nature more. And you know what I like to do in the new year? A lot of times I like to do a, an environmental inventory. Yeah, I like to do one for my house and for my myself too. So I kind of go around the house and look and see how did I do last year. Um, there are different websites out there where you can kind of take a, a test, so to say, to see what your carbon footprint is. So you may want to do that or just kind of sit back and try to figure it out on your own and see if you, you're you doing well, if you're environmentally friendly this year, this past year, and see, kind of figure out if you can do better on things. You know, personally and maybe with your home, you know, go around your house. One of the first places that I always recommend people start is under their kitchen sink. See what chemicals are under there. See what, what the ingredients are. Are they safe for the environment? Are they not? Do they contain a lot of bleach and, and other bad chemicals? And maybe you can start looking for alternatives. You know, and then head to the laundry room. You know, see what you can find in there. So basically do a house inventory, do a self-inventory, and see how you've done in 2023, and see if you can improve. You know, don't make the resolutions, because then you're bound to fail. But, you know, make a goal. Goals are good. So um, if you enjoyed what you heard, rate and review the podcast. Don't forget to invite your friends to listen to the podcast. Um, I have links to my online store. And, of course, if you didn't hear the at the beginning of the podcast, the advertisement I put in, I have some nature journals out, and I just got some children's guided nature journals. So if you go on Amazon, look for, or just Google Paul Ferringer, there is also a link in the show notes, but you can just Google on, or not Google, but on Amazon, um, put in the search bar, Paul Ferringer, and you're going to find all the nature journals that I have out. And there's three of them for adults, 
and there's several for children. So I have four guided nature journals for children, including um, your backyard, journaling in the in the woods, journaling in the field, and and exploring nature at night. That's my favorite. Yeah, so they're guided journals for the young ones. Check them out. Um, get one for the young ones in your life. And, of course, if you want to support the podcast, go to my Patreon page or my Ko-Fi, and you can click on the links in the show notes to get there. Patrons actually get some extras, some videos and such. And I'm working on some other perks for patrons as well. So be sure to check that out. And enjoy the rest of your day, and above all, Keep exploring the nature around you. Did you know that plastic is made with oil, a fossil fuel that pollutes the environment? And did you know that only about 15% of all plastic is recycled into new products? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could live our lives without plastic so that we could stop harming the planet? Well, there's a company that wants to help you do just that. Life Without Plastic sells products that will reduce or eliminate your dependence on plastic. They have a large selection from toothbrushes to food storage containers to drinking straws, all plastic-free. And... It's reasonably priced. So what are you waiting for? Check out all these great plastic-free products and help save the planet. Just click on the link in the show notes to find out more and to start your journey to being plastic-free.